they'll follow you. See, we have to understand that, that when God joined you with your wife, he made you one. He ain't going to let that elastic get out too far. You understand? Before he pull it back together. The problem we run in so many times is, is that we as men, we get pulled back. Instead of standing firm and allowing the wife to be pulled up where we at. Oh, it's quiet, but that's all right today. I didn't come for, for amens. I come to give you a word. I remember when I was 19 years old and I had gone through my first year of college and things were just not working. I couldn't pay the bills. I couldn't do the things I needed to do and go to school. And so I went and I saw the recruiter and I joined the army. And then I told my mama, and she was quite upset about it. But see, that wasn't a decision she needed to make. As a man, it was something I needed to do. And so I had to make a decision to do the thing that I needed to do in order that I could provide for myself and for my future family. See, my family lives in a house right now that, has, that is on a VA loan. You see, so I was trying to take care of my family at 19, and I didn't even know who my wife was going to be. But I had to trust that if I did the things that were right, the things that were good, right, and holy, it was going to work out. See, we got to get to this point where we truly begin to trust God. I was driving over here today, and uh, there was a brother that was driving in the car in front of me. And he had a sign in the back of his car, and it said, whatever happens, trust God. I said, wow. I said, what a timely word. Whatever happens, trust God. See, we, we, we don't really subscribe to that in today's Christianity. That's not part of what we want to do today. We don't believe in the whatever happens, trust God. You know how I know? Because I can tell by the inconsistencies that we deal with so frequently. We are always looking for a reason to step off the, the train. We're always looking for an excuse to get back off to the sidelines. We don't want to get off in the battle too long. It gets too hot and too heated in there. We look for a way to step out. My head hurt. My toe hurt. My wife is acting funny. Things are hard. I'm tired. We got all of these reasons and excuses why we don't want to do what God wants us to do. And then we wonder why we can't never seem to get where God wants us to get. Look. Look. Jesus shows up in a certain village. And there were ten men that were waiting on them there. You always notice whenever Jesus show up somebody where is somebody waiting on him. You know, I know, you know, you know, Jesus, you know, he don't really understand what's going on with you and your problems and your situation. That's what we love to act like. Like we don't understand. You know, Jesus don't understand what I'm dealing with. If he did, he wouldn't make it so hard. You know, that's our MO. But Jesus shows up not so that he can make it hard. But Jesus shows up so that he can give you a solution to your problem. Jesus showed up because we had a problem called sin and it has separated us from the Father. Yeah, it's Father's Day and, you know, when people love to say great things about their father. But, oh, but there's a father that's greater. And that's the father that wants to have a relationship with you. Doesn't matter whether you had a good relationship with your father here or not. There's another father that beckons to have a relationship with you. He loves you so much. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus, down. He said he will be the solution to your problem. All you got to do is trust on him. And you can have a relationship with me. He says, I'll be your Abba Father. He says, I got good gifts for you. But Jesus showed up. And the word of God says that there were 10 men that were lepers that stood afar off. Now, that leprosy, you know, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. People act like quarantine is something new. Like it just made up quarantine, you know, back in December or, you know, in January. All of a sudden, quarantine is something new. Quarantine ain't nothing new. Leprosy was a, a bacterial infection. It did terrible, horrible, deforming things to the body. And when people caught it, they separated them out. And when they separated them out, the rules changed. Because the Bible says that there were, uh, there were Samaritans and there were Jews in the group. They were all together. That wasn't supposed to be so. 
But see, when they got separated out, then everything went. See, what we have to understand is when we allow ourselves to walk in sin, then sooner or later, everything will go. Everything will go. Everything will be all right. And so these ten men, they, they are far off from the Lord. But the Bible says that they had the sense enough to lift up their voices and ask Jesus to have mercy on them. Now, we got to understand here in, in 13, he says, and he, they lifted up their voices and they called him. They knew who he was. They called him master. They knew what his title was. They said, have mercy on us. So, look, let's see. They understood who he was. They understood what his role was. Master mean that he was supposed to be Lord, that he was supposed to have dominion and power over them, that they were supposed to be subservient to him, and they asked him to have mercy on them. Mercy is simply a pity or concern for a suffering or a misfortune of others with a desire to make things better. He right. said, have compassion on us. They say, the situation that we find ourselves in, Lord, would you please help us out of it? See, this is the MO today. We find ourselves in situations that are not pleasing to us, and then we want to call on Jesus. We want to acknowledge who he is. We want to acknowledge that he is indeed master, that he is indeed Lord, and we want him to have mercy on us. Until what? Until he have mercy on us. This is what we see that's going on here. It's interesting that in this situation, as these ten men who have found themselves in the situation of life have been separated from the things that matter most to them. You know, you can imagine that this leprosy had caused some of them to be separated from their wives. This leprosy had caused some of them to be separated from their family members and their children. That was an expectation. That was a social distancing that had to take place in order for, uh, in order for these people to, to survive and live. They, had, they were required to not only to identify themselves as lepers, but they had to ensure that they separated themselves from other people. And so I imagine that there were some of them that just couldn't, that, that would love to be in a situation where they could go back and see their family. Some of them love, would love to be in a situation where they could go back and see their spouse. And some of them love to be in a situation where they could go back and see their Sancha too. But this situation that they found themselves in had turned their lives upside down. Everything that they thought they knew, every plan that they thought they had, everything they wanted to accomplish in life, all turned upside down because of leprosy. They had this leprosy now, and things had changed. And now there's folks that are walking around with, the, with the, basically a leprosy now. And for those that don't walk around with the leprosy, are walking around fearful of the leprosy. And it has turned their lives upside down. But these ten men had enough sense to call on the Lord for his mercies. Now, I guarantee you it was more than ten of them that was there in the area. Where were the, other, where were the remainders of them? They didn't even have enough sense to even call on Jesus. But these 10 had enough know-it-all to say, we heard about a man named Jesus and how he's been going around healing other folk. And if he could do it for them, he can do it for me. Say, he can do it for me. See, if you allow me to come to this church eight years ago, and I want you to know I'm nowhere near the sharpest tack tax in the box. You understand what I'm saying to you? But if he can heal me, he can heal you. If he can clean my mess up, he can clean your mess up. 
But you got to make up your mind that you want to be cleaned up. You see, when I came to Word Deliverance Ministries, I had already tried the church thing. I tried the any all right thing. I tried to smile in your face and talk about you behind your back. I tried the church click thing. Oh, I'm part of this group at the church. I ain't part of that. I tried all of that junk. That didn't work. At the end of the day, I was still lacking. I was still in need. I was still wanting. There was still a void in me that was not filled. You see, so many times we're still running around. We claim the name of Jesus. We say he is master. We say he is Lord. We call it on his mercies, but there are still holes in us that are not filled. We're still at home walking around. We're still lost. We still have these needs and wants and desires of things that are not seeming to be filled. Things are still not right. There's still no peace. There's still no joy. There's still no ability to shut your mouth in time when you prayed and asked for shut mouth grace. And so in the time when you know you need to shut up with your spouse, you can't help yourself. Just got that nasty case of the I can't help us. Got that nasty case of the I don't want us. I just don't want to do it. I know I need to be a Sunday school bishop. I just, I just don't want to. I don't want to carry the day. I can't ha- help it carry the day. But we say Jesus is our master and our Lord. We ask him to have mercy on us. Ten men came, said, Jesus, master, you the master, you the boss, you have the power to do this, have mercy on us. The Bible says, and when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. Now, it's, it's interesting that when he's, he shows up where they're at, they give a request, and he answers the request with a command. He didn't tell them, you go, go you heal. I would love to tell you, I got here at Word Deliverance Ministries, and by two days in, I was all right, and then I was, you know, I was okay. I was ready to teach the bishop something. But that's not how it worked. Soon as I got here, what I began to learn was there were expectations that Jesus had on me if I was going to be in the kingdom. God required some things of me. And I had to begin to learn what those things are. Therefore, I had to read the word of God. I had to come where I could hear the word of God and the necessary teachings in order to be what the Lord wanted me to be. And so if you're struggling on getting where the word is, then my goal What is your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? Because look, he told them to go to church. That's what he told them. He said, you want to be healed, go to church. That's what he told them. That was the law at that time. If there was a question about leprosy as to whether you were clean or not, You were supposed to go to the priest. The priest would examine you, and he would identify as to whether or not you was clean or not. Ten men. And I can see them all get together and look at each other and say, well, that ain't, that's kind of like putting a cart before the horse, ain't it? Hold on, we supposed to be cleansed, cleansed, and then we supposed to go. We don't have no reason to go. You know, that's for folks that's like, I'm going to fix me first. I'm going to clean me up. And then I'm going to go to church. You know, as soon as I get it together, as soon as I get it all right. But it don't work that way. See, we have to understand that sometimes things are not supposed to look the way we think we're supposed to look. That's why we got to stop leaning to our own understanding. If the Lord said do, just do. Look, this gets so many people here at Word of Deliverance Ministries in trouble. The Lord tell you to do something, and you outwit your own self. You you outthink yourself into a ditch. Great big old, the door is open. All you got to do is walk through it, and you'd be like, no, it got to be anything but that door that opened up over there. It can't be that. Because that's what the Lord told me. It can't be. It's got to be a trick. And when it comes down to it, it's a lack of trust in God.
going to church, all 10 of them. I imagine they got together and said, well, we're going we gonna to go. You clean? No, I ain't clean. You clean? No, I ain't clean. But he said go. I ain't doing nothing else. We might as well go. And so they went. The Bible says that as soon as they started going, as soon as they started heading down the road, something happened. See, this is the thing we got to understand. As soon as you make up your mind to trust Jesus completely, something will happen. If, if you're still getting the same whooping, you know what I'm saying? Look, if, if you show up at to battle and Satan keep putting on the same record about I'm going to whoop you today. And he tell, I'm going to slap you with the left hand. I'm going to backhand you with the right. <laughs> if he put the same record on every day and beat you the same way, you're not trusting God. If, you, if you've been having the same problem for the last five years in the same area, you're not trusting God. If the same thing keeps on beating you up, you're not trusting God. If your mouth keep getting you in trouble, you ain't trusting God. It's that simple. If you keep on trying to run stuff that you know it ain't your business to run, you're not trusting God. And I want you to know that coming in here and standing up and say you are trusting God don't mean you're trusting God. My kids used to have a problem shutting up. I would tell my kids, shut up, and they would keep talking. I would look at them, I would say, do you not understand what shut up means? Shut up, shut up don't mean just stop talking. Shut up means don't make a sound. I would tell them, I said, since you struggle to understand what it means, take your hand, put it over your mouth, and leave it there. Some of you need to take your hand, put it over your mouth, and just leave it there. You put a mask on, you ain't got no problem putting a mask on your face. You're more scared about COVID than you are about saying something disrespectful and dishonoring your God. Oh, I got to put a mask on because I don't want to catch the COVID. What, what, who cares if you catch the COVID, die and bust hell open? When, when, when in the world did the COVID become worse than hell? There ain't going to be no respirators in hell. They put you on a respirator. You either going to come off or you going to go on. But in hell, you're going you to boil to a crisp on the regular forever. But we more concerned about COVID-19 than we are going to hell. Got five masks, one for every day, match outfits. Won't shut up when your husband tell you something. But, ooh, I don't want to catch the COVID, though. Look, there's power in obedience. Power in obedience. It pleases God. Jesus had to learn obedience. What make you think you don't? Oh, that's obedience. It's a beautiful thing. He will come and he will test you in that spot, in that place. Whoo! He'll test you right there in that spot. In that spot where yo, I don't want to, I don't feel like it is the strongest. That's where he'll touch you at. And he'll put, the, he'll put you to the test. He'll say, which one do, do you love yo? I can't help it. I, I just want to. I just feel like it. Or do you trust me? You love me. Which one do you pick? See, that's what's getting ready to happen here. The Bible says that they were obedient. It came to pass as they went, they were clean. They were cleansed. And then the Bible says, but one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back. He said, when one of them saw that he was healed, he turned back. He said, when one of them saw that the thing that he desired to be delivered from was gone, they said he, he had a new mission. See, they were sent to church. 
See, and, and, and the problem that we have today in Christian society is we think showing up at church is enough. We think, you know, we do a God a favor, we show up at church. I showed up at church three times last month. Surely God must be pleased with me. I was late two times, I fell asleep the other time, but surely God must be pleased with me. I got a new flash for you. God's not concerned if you show up for church, if you didn't come to serve Jesus. Oh, okay. Let's go to Matthew 7. Let's go to Matthew 7. Matthew 7, 21. You've heard this verse many times. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? He said, in other words, what are we doing church work? He says, in thy name, cast out devils. He said, what are we doing ministry? He says, and in thy name done many wonderful works. We were putting in work. We cleaned the churchyard up. We helped nail some boards in over there on Dunbarton. We sang songs of praise. You say, well, none of that matters. If you didn't find yourself at the feet of Jesus, giving him all the praise and all the glory. I think about these ten men and what must have happened because they had been in, in unity this entire time. They had been as one. While they, were living in, while they were living in exile, in quarantine, they were as one. They, were, they had got together and agreed. We go, let's go see Jesus. They got together and they agreed. Let's go, even though we're not healed yet, let's go to church. But now they break off. But now there's ten that have been in agreement. Only one of them now makes a decision to go back. You see... It, this serving Jesus.